back when I was young, I enjoyed playing baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few people in the county, and, well, the surrounding counties, and also that I played with that I still remember. But uh, so many of them not living at the present, but uh, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I believe it called Pennsylvania County uh, Summer Pro League. I won't play in the pitch or not, pitch, um, pitch one game and play right field in the other. What was the team, the teams that y'all played on? What were the names of? Well, Martin Herman had a team, Blaze, Callens, Chatham. Different uh, communities. Ringo. Yes. And then the, they just played each other then? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. As I told them, we was, all, we was all friends before we started. But when we got on the ball field, we was able to, we was going to beat one of them. After it's over, we're still okay. friends again. <laughs> Brothers and three sisters. And did they all help on the in the tobacco farm? Yes, all back in all through the years, uh, the children had a. But as soon as they got large enough, they had the final job for them to do. Do you remember what you did? Did you start out really little, um, handing leaves or something like that, or? Um... Yes, uh, back then you. Uh, They'd set you up on a stool and hand leaves or whatever you had to do, and you had uh, chores that you had to do at home as you growed up large enough. Uh, my job was milking cows. Everyone had a cow, but we had two because of large famine. My job was to milk your two cows each morning when before we'd start to school and also we all had uh, rabbit traps and we had to go to those and then also we had to uh, get fire started in the wood stoves for the home mm -hmm. and so we had quite a job. I went to Myron Herman uh, Elementary School first. It's over on 41 in Myron Herman area where food line is located now and uh, we walked to school each morning. The first year that I went to school I told them I didn't I didn't think you need to go to school and I wouldn't do anything. I'd stubborn and uh, they sent me to school every morning quite a few times they had to give me a little therapy to go but I made it. But uh, the second year, I, they said, you go back the same, and I went back to the same teacher, and I decided I just wanted to go to school because, so I made it on through and finished high school at Whitmore, Farm Life High School. I just enjoyed uh, farm work, and uh, I didn't mind it because I uh, had good health, and uh, it's just a thing that we just grew up with, and we knew we had to do it. We built that, that was the last barn that we put up as a community job mm -hmm. because usually back in those years and, and the years before that, the neighbors would all come in and help you in building your barn rather than you having to pay someone to do it because we didn't have any money. But uh, we put that barn up in one day I thought was by just using manual labor by, and we had uh, skid poles that we pushed the logs up with, and uh, it, so we uh, we made it all right. And I, I have helped build uh, quite a few, I'd say 12 or 15 before then, by the time I got large enough to work in them. So we enjoyed working like that had a good time in the meantime to working together and talking. Did they have um, specific people on the ends that would cut the um, corner notches in? We call them the one that chopped the corners. Now that's that's just a uh, that's not the official name problem but that's what we said and I remember all of those too. In fact I, I, I was one of the ones that cut the corners of the logs.
and I helped on this last bond that we put up in 1956. The, uh, we'd get the log up at a, at a certain position. Usually if it had a little bend in it, would be, you'd have that bend up and then when it settled, and if you kept the log level a good many times when you would cut the notch and push that log over in and it'll just drop right in and not have to move it, but not a, every time it happened that way, but the ones that really did good on it, they could, uh, most of the time, it would just fall right in the notch on both ends, and I thought that was pretty good to be able to not have to move one. Mm -hmm. Well, I cut all the logs myself before. Uh, the day we were going to build a barn, and uh, the mule, I would pull the logs up to the barn with the mule and had it all all ready. The tail poles, we had to skin those with a, a knife to uh, get all the bark off of those, and we'd have those also ready that helped to be ready for to build the barn. Uh, you would usually get some red clay and mix it with the other because it would stand up better and last probably longer. And uh, you, you just have to know the exact mixture of water and, and everything and, and we'd get it daubed in probably one day. You had five boxes, but you built those after you built a barn. And uh, another thing I mentioned also that the women of the community would come in and help your wife uh, fix lunch, and they by lunchtime they had uh, everything ready for that. And we usually had some large tables out, and we all ate. Uh, on that, and we had some real good meals also, and enjoyment of being together. In fact, I had one to burn down. That's the reason we had to build the one, the last one we built. Uh, the man that was working with me at the time, uh, we went off to something, that, some function that we had to go to, and. I asked him to look after it while I was gone, and I told him that uh, not to put too much pine wood in there, it, just use oak and pine, and it, because if you put too much pine, a lot of times out in front of the firebox, it would, the fire would be so strong in that it would come out over the firebox and catch a log up above the barn, and he didn't, he put too much pine in there, and, as we came back over the mountain, I saw a big smoke, and I told them that uh, I believe that barn of mine was burning, and we got here, and it was, and it burned completely down mm -hmm. because he, he said he put just too much pine in it. Did y'all have a pack house out here? Yes, uh, we built also built that, but we built that not by logs. It was built by... Uh, wood, but I cut the logs for it and had it at that time, I uh, had a sawmill nearby that uh, cut the timber for me and, and, well, a group of us built it one day also. Is that one still standing? Yes, it's, it's still down and it's mm -hmm. doing very well. Did it have a pit? The yes, pit? it had a, in the bottom floor it had one uh, half of it was be in the uh, pit where you moisten the back of, uh, be able to handle it. And then the other part was where you uh, graded it out and tied it. You had to tie it in bundles at the time. When you say grading, does that mean um, looking at the different brightness of the leaves? Yeah, it would. The bottom leaves, you had to take it off and uh, keep it separate and then the middle part of the stalk would be different and then the top part would be called leaf which was a heavier bodied 
device, so you have to keep each one separate. Put it on a table as you laid it down in front of you, and then usually it'd be uh, some of the older people that knew the different grades would grade it out in different and lay it in different piles. So you, that's the way it was operated at that time. And you uh, put it back on a stick so you'd be able to handle it, uh, put it on your truck or whatever you carried it to market. Back when I was small, we carried it with a wagon. And uh, I remember going with my father. We would carry it one evening and uh, to the warehouse and get it unloaded and sell it the next day. We would spend the night in, in the basement of the warehouse. And uh, that's why you put your, also you put your mules and wagon down there. There's a lot of area down there, and uh, you usually the whatever you had to cover the tobacco when you was carrying the market, you put that in the back of the wagon, and that's why you slept at night. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a big, uh, big to do for us because very few times we went uh, was able to go to market like that. We would grade it out and have a big pile of it uh, in different spaces in the room. And that night then, several of your neighbors would come in and we'd uh, all have a, tie that tobacco up and put it on the sticks and we'd have a lot of fun. And we'd usually have the woman of the, that would usually, where well, they had the tying of the tobacco that she would have something cooked real nice and which back then they did have some good meals so mm -hmm. we had an enjoyable time.